what is up you guys good morning it is a lovely morning out here on the farm the sun is just coming up well I mean just coming up over the trees it's been day broke probably about an hour ago it feels so good outside it's not hot yet <laughs> good morning chickies good morning good morning I want the chickies to learn that when I come it means treats and the geese, I just love them so much. Look how cute they are and how big they're getting. You know, all winter, I will see homesteaders who live in very cold climates talk about having to go out real regularly and break the ice off waters. And while I have experienced that some, definitely not the regular. We've had cold weeks that we've had to do that, but not entire months. Our struggle in the hot south is um, keeping everything cool this time of year. So that means coming out and making sure waterers never run out because that could mean death. That hose back in and let that fill up. It'll take a little while. The geese aren't wanting to play with me. I guess it's not hot enough for them to get excited about a little sprinkle of rain. What they do usually is they'll all stand up real straight, open their mouths and flap their little wings. Even if they've got water in there when it starts to fall from overhead. It's so cute, but it's also like, pretty cool out here this morning but yeah we have these big water troughs we have multiple ones around the pasture at different places and we just put them close to where we have like a faucet where we can easily fill them and we're looking at filling them sometimes you know a few times a day between the cows and the horses all right I'm out in the high tunnel assessing my damaged plants deciding what I'm gonna do in here. So I was just talking with Will and we were making a plan as to what we're gonna do to try to move forward in this high tunnel. So let's talk about my issue and my high tunnel. Um, I don't really talk about my opinions on hot button topics just a whole lot. I really value living my life outside of an echo chamber. And my personal belief is, is that if you need a person to agree with you and see the world like you in order to value them, that you don't love people, you love yourself. And I don't want to be that kind of person. I've never wanted to be that kind of person. I value people because I see them as image bearers. And so when I look at them, all I can see is value, even if they are completely different than me. So I've learned in my life to observe and listen um, and kind of keep my opinions to myself largely. It's, it's fascinating to me to see where everybody is, but here's, I, I for once, I'm going to tell you guys where I am. Um, and I don't, I don't do that a lot because while I have the capacity to not agree with people and still see the value in them, um, my experience is, is that a lot of people do not choose to have that capacity. Um, as soon as you start sharing your opinions when they don't agree with you, they want to cut you off and cancel you and um, that's fine really. Ultimately it's their loss if, if they can't choose connection. And I've been thinking about this issue in my soil and I've been thinking about the nearly 2,000 messages that I have received in the last week since sharing my, I shared this issue like a few days ago actually, um, and, and nearly 2,000 between inbox comments on different social media platforms, comments, emails, um, it's mind boggling how many people all over the world have received contaminated soil in the last few years. I received soil that was contaminated and that's why my high tunnel looks like this and the company that I got the soil from is being amazing and doing their very best to help all the people who have received this they are devastated they feel you know this is something that's happened to them too um, and and they're just completely devastated they've always had an amazing product they are doing lots of testing trying to rectify the issue but the fact of the matter is is that all of these seeds and all of these plants that I started and that many many other people started are now ruined and and while food prices are going through the roof and inflation is crazy and people are struggling and co seriously concerned about how they're going to buy groceries, um, I would say the home garden is more important than ever right now. And people are really struggling with growing a garden because it's a worldwide issue. It's not just the company that I got this from. I know that a few years ago, Charles Dowding was sharing that he had graze on um, contaminated soil that had caused issues. I know that Danny at Deep South Homestead had graze on contaminated soil. Um, 
soil that came from the hay that he fed to his goats and then composted the manure and it ended up contaminating his plants. What the general consensus is, is that the issue that I have in mind is also an aminopyrrolid issue, which is a contaminant in the soil that comes from an herbicide that is sprayed on grass crops. That it's, it's a, called a broadleaf herbicide. It's typically known as Grazon. It's created by Dow. And it can stay in the soil for at least four years, causing issues. And I made this comment the other day about, well, I just find it devastating that while gardening is so imperative because of food prices and shortages that this is happening. And I had many people say enough that, I mean, when you're talking to this large of an audience, you can say something and even the minority is, you know, dozens of people. And I had people saying, well, don't start with that. Don't start with that conspiracy theory. Don't act like somebody's poisoning our soil. And... I am very much of the mind that if you see something wrong in the world, you figure out what the next step you can do to change it. To go against the grain, to go against the norm, to go against the mainstream, and do what you know is right. Whenever I look at commercial food production, I, from the realization of not wanting to have anything to do with that, my next step has been grow a garden, raise my own food, cook from scratch, support local farmers, support people doing things the way that I believe they should be done, and try to remove myself from a system that I see is so clearly broken. Regarding this and the idea that somehow it's a conspiracy theory that there's poison in our soil and that's a problem and issues keep coming up and you could try to say that it's a coincidence that all of these things are happening at the same time. You could you could have that argument. I don't really care. I'm going to grow a garden either way. But the idea that it's a conspiracy theory that there is a company that creates a poison that we routinely put in our earth, the company also creates the fertilizer that's necessary after you use the poison to get anything to grow at all. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's the truth. Our system is broken and we humans are, are regularly poisoning the earth right now. The earth that we desperately need to not be poisoned in order to feed us. And yes, it makes me furious that home gardeners are losing the option of going and just purchasing the resources from companies who are trying to do things the right way so that they could have just some little bit of freedom and food sustainability and security. And they're losing that option because this poison is seeping into places that it's not intended to be. That makes me real mad. It makes me furious that that poison exists in the first place. At no point in history until the last hundred years have we been poisoning the earth the way that we are right now and while yes i have had people be like you can't possibly want to eat this stuff that grows out of this high tunnel you can't possibly feed that to your children do you honestly think that you are existing in this earth right now and not being affected by the toxins that we are regularly spraying all over everything like honestly if you are eating any meat that is grown commercially where you're going to the store and purchasing it unless maybe it's organic and pastured but even then what do those labels mean exactly do you know the person who raised it if you were eating any of that stuff you were eating stuff that was raised on gmo soy gmo corn gmo beets and yes they have been sprayed with god knows what toxins and chemicals and yes cancer rates are through the roof and yes disease is through the roof and all of this stuff is going on and we're going conspiracy theory no it's not and until we can open our eyes and see that our system is extraordinarily broken and do whatever it takes to take some power back into our own hands and support people who are doing this differently, we're going to just keep falling prey to it. And I, I don't want to do that. And so, no, I'm not going to scrape this this nasty soil out of my high tunnel and, and just go buy something that I know is good and put it in there. I'm going to figure out how to fix it. That's, that's really where I'm at. I, I want to figure out... How do you heal the earth after someone has, has come to destroy her? Again, with that language of people being like, well, somebody's doing this. You're right. There is a very, very broken system. Who's in charge of it and why they're doing it, that you could all speculate on. But the truth of the matter is the fact that I have told people, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an herbicide that's going on here. And they've been like, 
oh, it's, it's probably this. It's not something that's been done on purpose. It's probably, it's probably just, it's just Grazon. And I'm like, just Grazon? Oh, it's just that poison that we spray on our earth, that we spray on the grass crops and the corn crops that we feed our animals and then we consume what they produce. Is that, that's just that. It's just that poison. Don't, it's not somebody trying to hurt you. It's just that poison. And I disagree with that entirely. And I, you know, I've had enough of people being like, get off your high horse. And I just want to be like, you know what, get off your couch. This makes me feel very powerless. It makes me feel moments that it feels very hopeless. Because when I see how far reaching the problem is and the, the seemingly tininess of any solution that's within my grasp, I think, how in the world could you take on this giant with just a few little stones and a slingshot? That's what it feels like. The, the beauty is, is I know that, that that can work. And when I first started talking about the broken food system, um, all I could do was grow a garden and shop at the farmer's market. That's the only thing that I could do, was just grow a garden and shop at the farmer's market. And that's what I did. And... It's, it's, it felt so, so small, like a raindrop in a swimming pool. And I've been thinking about this and actually looked it up. Do you know it takes 50 billion raindrops to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool? 50 billion. That's like 50 billion? There aren't even 50 billion of us. Like, how in the world can you make a difference with the raindrop effort when you're talking about a really big problem? But then I thought about it, and you know, when I first started to realize how broken the system was, it's been probably about 15 years ago and I started to make these little decisions and I started to drive out to farms to buy milk and to find a source of grass-fed beef and to do these little things and each one of those little raindrops added up and the next thing I knew you know just in my own personal life before YouTube I was I was making thousands of raindrop decisions, little decisions that, that just added up of where I was spending my money and how I was doing these things. And then YouTube happened. And I'm like, now I wonder how many tomatoes were not put in plastic bags at the grocery store and driven home? And how many of those plastic bags were not thrown in the trash because somebody watched a video on YouTube about how to grow tomatoes. How many raindrops is that? And I think maybe we could fill a swimming pool with the raindrops of decisions that we're making. And I think maybe if you put an Olympic sized swimming pool in the middle of a shopping mall and then you emptied it, it might destroy the place. And so I really think that if you look at this broken system and it feels so massive that you're like, how in the world could I make a difference here? I genuinely believe with my most earnest and honest self, you just make the little decisions. You just take the little stand, you pick up the little stone, you put it in your slingshot and you know that doing what is right it matters. And so I'm not gonna tear out all the soil in this greenhouse. And the fact is, is that I could. I could tear the, the soil out of this greenhouse because of YouTube, that could call this a loss. They're refunding me for the soil. It sucks I lost the plants, but I could tear this out. I could put more soil in. We could start fresh in two weeks. Um, and it'd be, it'd, it'd, you know, I could count my sunk costs and move forward. But I don't wanna do that. I wanna, I wanna collect raindrops here. This morning, Will got back from being on vacation and I told him what I wanted to do and he brought the stuff to make compost tea and all these different stuff and he goes, you know, of anybody that this could have happened to, I think it's best that it happened to you because now people are gonna learn about how to deal with this. And that's what I wanna do. I wanna do the next little thing in front of me and I wanna put one more drop in the swimming pool and know that at some point it's gonna make a difference. And I want to tell you guys, it's not normal to spray poison on the earth. It's not normal to eat things that give us cancer. That is not the way we were designed. That is not the way plants were designed to grow. That was not the way the earth was designed to heal itself. That's not the way animals were designed to be raised. And it has not been until the last hundred years that all of these things have become just normal. And it's not normal to me. And I refuse to pretend like it's normal. I would really like to set an example that it's completely okay to think that it's not normal for poison to be sprayed on the earth. 
to think that animals should not be raised the way that they're being raised in feedlots where they never see grass, where they're just fed hay and corn that's been sprayed with a poison so great that it still lingers after it's gone through their digestive tract. They're four stomachs and it still can poison your garden. That's not normal. And the solution to that for me is not to just sweep it under the rug. The solution to that is to heal the little bit of the earth that I have to heal and to do my very best to give it the resources to operate the way that it was created to operate. So if I can do that in any way that gives you the permission to see value in making those little raindrop decisions, that's what I want to do. And it really is my most earnest belief that it's not always going to be like this that we're not standing in a place that it only gets worse. I do not believe that. I believe, again, in the value of people, and I genuinely believe that we can make a difference, that right now we could change the trajectory of this thing. And I've been called foolishly optimistic to believe that, and I'm like, no. I believe that the earth was created to thrive, and I believe that we were too. And I'm willing to load up the slingshot and I'm willing to do the very next thing that's in front of me. And I hope that you are too, because that's what's going to take. That's, it's just going to take a group of people with enough hope to do the little thing that's in front of them and do what they know is right and believe earnestly that at some point those raindrops are going to collect enough. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Till next time.